Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I'll discuss about directional coupler with great clarity. Before I start with my explanation, let me tell you how many points that I'm going to cover in this video. First of all, I'll start this session with basics of directional coupler. After that, I'll explain one hole directional coupler and two hole directional coupler. After that, I'll explain designing parameters of directional coupler. After that, I'll derive scattering parameters of directional coupler. And at last, I'll explain applications of directional coupler. So let us begin this session with first agenda that is basics of directional coupler. Let me explain how directional coupler functions. See here in directional coupler, we have main waveguide. And with this main waveguide, we will be giving input signal. With directional coupler, we have secondary waveguide as well. This secondary waveguide that is connected to main waveguide over here. And this connection provides flow of signal in secondary waveguide as well. So this input signal that will appear in main waveguide output as well as that is getting coupled over here in secondary waveguide. So here we have coupled output and here we have main output. And one more feature is there with directional coupler where we will be isolating output as well. Means this port is isolated with respect to input port. So basic function of directional coupler is to couple input signal in two different ports. So directional coupler is four port device. It is used to couple power in two different ports. Here our agenda is to couple power from main waveguide to secondary waveguide without having any disturbance in original signal, right? These directional couplers are fundamental components in many RF applications. We can use it in sampling of signal. We can use it in measurement of RF devices as well as we can use it in routing of signal. Now I'll explain single hole directional coupler. See in single hole directional coupler, we have main waveguide over here and we have secondary waveguide over here. Here coupling of signal happens via single hole. So here we have single hole in main waveguide via which signal will flow over here and here we have coupled output port. So in single hole directional coupler, we have only one hole via which coupling of signal will happen. And single hole directional coupler that is also referred as Bathe hole directional coupler. Here we have four port device and using this four port directional coupler, we will be coupling signal at two different ports. One is there at main output port, which is port number two. And second is there at coupled output port that is port number three. Here we will be coupling signal via single hole only. And that is happening with minimal disturbance with this original signal, right? Now I'll explain two hole directional coupler. When you talk about two hole directional coupler, then here in main waveguide, we have two holes. And via these two holes, there will be coupling of signal from main waveguide to secondary waveguide. Now here, let me explain how signal will appear at output. So if you observe, this is input signal that is coupling via this hole as well as via this hole. Here, spacing between these two hole is lambda G by four. So as and when signal flows in this direction, at that time, this signal that is added over here. And because of this signal is having zero phase difference when it is flowing in this direction, there is addition of these two signals, right? But as and when this signal that goes in this direction, at that time, there is 180 degree phase shift in between these two signal. You can observe here signal is coming over here with zero phase and second portion of signal that is coming over here with lambda g by 4 plus lambda g by 4 means 180 degree because of which here signal is getting cancelled 
and at isolated output port we will be having zero output right so here in two hole directional coupler spacing between two hole that is lambda g by 4 but in general equation is 2n plus 1 into lambda g by 4 where i have considered n is equals to 0 so two hole directional coupler is four port device that we use it to provide input signal at two different ports here i have provided output at main port and at coupled output port power will be coupling over here via two holes so that is getting coupled over here via two different holes as and when signal goes towards port number four at that time signal from these two separate holes that is having zero phase because of which that is getting added over here and towards output port 3 which is isolated port there is phase difference in between these two signals and that phase difference is 180 degree because of which that is getting cancelled and output at isolated port that should be zero ideally and as if you talk about spacing between these two holes then that is lambda g by 4 over here but in general equation is 2n plus 1 into lambda g by 4 where as if i consider n is equals to 0 then this spacing is lambda g by 4 but it could be 2n plus 1 lambda g by 4 when n is integer number now i'll explain you parameters of directional coupler to understand parameters of directional coupler first of all you need to understand name of power see here as per the working you can say here we are having input port where we apply p in amount of power and this is main waveguide where main output is having p out power here we have coupled output port where p coupled power is there and here we have isolated port where p isolated power is coming ideally p isolated power that should be zero but practically that will happen right now let me discuss about parameters so first parameter is coupling factor so coupling factor that is explaining a ratio of power at p in divided by p couple so here we are applying p in power and here p couple power is happening let me take one example if you have 3 db directional coupler then this power which is happening over here half of power that is getting coupled over here right if i say one volt power that is inserted over here then half watt power that is getting coupled so that is a ratio of p in by p couple this is calculated in terms of db as and when you calculate data in terms of db and if data is given in form of power then here 10 log that will appear if it is there in form of voltage then 20 log that will appear right the second parameter that is directivity so directivity that is there based on ratio of coupled power and isolated power so directivity will be infinite if you have zero isolated power that one can say right so isolated power that should be zero ideally if it is zero then directivity will be infinite but practically directivity will be given to you based on that you can understand how much power that is appearing at isolated port right the third parameter that is insertion loss insertion loss means loss happens because of device insertion like you see here we have input power if you don't insert this device then but obviously power will be input power only but as we are inserting this device output power that is p out over here right so ratio p in by p out that is insertion loss and that is happening because of insertion of device right the fourth parameter that is isolation what we need to isolate we need to isolate output at this port where we will be having cancellation of signal so isolation that explains ratio of input by p isolated power right now i'll explain you scattering parameters of directional coupler so here we have four port directional coupler so but obviously scattering parameter that will be having size of four cross four matrix so you can observe here i have mentioned four cross four matrix 
Now here I'll explain you what is the meaning of these parameters. Based on meaning you can directly understand how these parameters are coming. First of all you need to understand SIJ. So what is SIJ? I stands for output port and J stands for input port. Now you can easily understand what is the meaning of these parameters. See S11 means input at 1, output at 1 means that is reflection at port 1. S22 means input at 2, output at 2 means that is reflection at port 2. S33 means this 3 that is input at 3, output at 3 means that is reflection at 3. So here S11, S22, S33, S44 those are reflection coefficients. Ideally reflection coefficient should be 0 that is purely based on impedance matching at port. So as and when we connect supply over here at that time we need to see impedance matching of that supply with this waveguide. Based on that one can identify reflection coefficients. Ideally reflection is 0 based on that you can observe here zeros are considered right here these zeros are considered. So S11, S22, S33, S44 those are reflection coefficients. Now I'll explain you S12, S21, S34, S43 those are transmission coefficients. Now how those are transmission coefficients? For that you need to consider main waveguide. See here right now this is main waveguide. So if this is main waveguide then S12 means input at 2, output at 1 that is S12. So here you will be applying input in that situation. S21 means input at 1, output at 2. So with this main waveguide, this direct forward power that is defined by S12, S21. With this secondary waveguide, if you apply input over here, then you will be having S43 that is this transmission coefficient and with this secondary waveguide if you apply input over here then S43 that is transmission coefficient for this waveguide right. So here see transmission coefficient those are denoted by S12, S21, S34, S43 right. And here you can observe that is having ratio that is given as per P means P amount of fraction of power that is going in a forward path. You can say it is going in a forward path like you have two waveguides. So in single waveguide if you apply input at one waveguide then in same waveguide output is forward power right. So fraction is denoted by P over here. So you can observe S1 to S21, S34, S43 those are P over here right. If you observe S14, S41, S23, S32 that is coupling coefficients. Coupling coefficient means if you apply input over here then we are talking about output at this port and if you apply input over here then we are talking about output at this port. So that is S41 and if you apply input over here then that is S14. Similarly if you apply input over here then we will be talking about coupling at this port. So that will be S23 and if you apply input over here then we will be talking about output at this port that is S32. So here these are coupling coefficient. So that is denoted by Q over here right. So that is this diagonal over here right. Let me take one example. If you talk about ideal directional coupler and if you have 3dB directional coupler then 3dB means half power. Half power means this Q value that will be 1 by root 2. The reason is this parameter that is a ratio of voltage. It is not ratio of power. It is not ratio of power. Remember this. So for 3 dB this value of Q that is 1 by root 2 right and based on that value of P will be also 1 by root 2 right. Now I'll talk about 4 more S parameters those are S13, S31, S24, S42. 
those are isolation coefficient what it means see if you apply input over here this port should be isolated means s 3 1 if you apply input over here then this port should be isolated that is s 1 3 similarly these two ports are also isolated with each other means s 1 3 s 3 1 s 2 3 and s 4 2 those are isolation coefficients right ideally it should be zero so that's why it is placed as a zero over here this is ideal scattering parameter of directional coupler right now let me discuss about applications see with directional coupler first application is based on power monitoring so how to monitor power like see we have one main waveguide now with this one main waveguide if you don't want to disturb that and if you want to identify how much power that is there with that waveguide then just take a fractional of power and monitor fractional of power only right so by taking a sample of fraction of power one can do measurement without interrupting main signal flow right the second application could be signal routing if you want to route signal in the multiple ports then that could be done using directional coupler right the third application is based on isolation and protection we have isolated port using which one can provide protection right so if you have high power signal and if you want to isolate some port then you can use directional coupler and last application that i'm going to explain is based on impedance matching so if you have impedance matching then you can minimize the reflection right so here we are having ports those ports are waveguide ports and if you have proper impedance matching then one can transfer power with maximum efficiency so that is how there could be many applications which is there with directional coupler i hope you have enjoyed this session still if anything that i would like to share just note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video